Hey everyone, and welcome to the Read Aloud for Monday. Um, this is directly for the background essay on Europe's colonization of Africa. All right, we're going to ju jump right in, so that way I don't take up too much of your time. Hope you guys are all doing well. All right, so the background essay, starting with our question. What was the driving force behind European imperialism in Africa? Okay, why... Why did Africa, or excuse me, why did Europe decide to colonize Africa? That's kind of what we're looking for as we go here. So feel free to underline any um, main ideas and circle any key terms. I will hopefully try to do that as we go along. All right, maybe not. Between 1500 and 1800, European slavers and traders did not venture far from the African coast. The west coast of Africa, from the Senegal River to Angola was known as the white man's grave. Malaria was the biggest killer, and crews often stayed on ship when trading their European pots and clothes, cloth and guns for West African slaves. During these 300 years, European presence in Africa was not about imperialism and seizing colonies. It was about buying slaves from local chiefs and then getting out of West African waters with your crew and slave cargo still alive. In 1807, the British outlawed the transatlantic slave trade, and in 1833, slavery itself. At this point, the only British colony in Africa was the Cape Colony in Southern Africa. What now sharpened Europe's interest in Africa was exploration. Okay, so if I were you, I would go ahead and pause, and I would underline this. What now shape, or excuse me, sharpened Africa's interest, or Europe's interest in Africa was exploration. Okay, that's going to be one of our main ideas. Okay. Well, apparently I have to erase that. You guys get the point, though. All right, erase that. Do, 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 do. Moving on. Scotsman Mungo Park gave his life in 1806 while investigating the Niger River region in West Africa. In 1840, David Livingston began more than 30 years into the interior of Central Africa, whereas maps of Africa drawn in 1800 had left great holes in the continent center. By 1850, some of the blanks were filling in. Still, as late as 1870, only 10% of Africa was under European control, and most of that was along the edges. French Algeria, British Sierra Leone, Portuguese Angola. King Leopold of Belgium broke this pattern. In the early 1880s, he acquired a private country of 900,000 square miles in Central Africa. Leopold called his estate Congo Free State. Leopold's Congo was 95 times the size of Belgium, and his purpose was to make money by taking out ivory and rubber. To clarify for you guys, King Leopold owns all of this country of Congo. Okay, At the time, this area is all his personally. Not his country's, his. Okay, All right, let's go ahead and pick up right here. Over the next 20 years, Leopold's managers proceeded to kill, through forced labor, horrible mistreatment, and the introduction of disease, as many as 10 million people. It was not a good beginning for European imperialism in Africa. So this, because of King Leopold wanting to make money, over 10 million Africans in the Congo area that was controlled by Belgium died. That's totally insane. All right, let's continue on. During the same years that Leopold was buying the Congo, other European leaders were becoming very aware of two things. One, first, Africa was filled with incredibly natural resources. Two, or second, a scramble for these riches could lead to war among the European powers. Otto von Bismarck of Germany proposed that a conference be held in Berlin in 1884 and 1885 to divide up Africa in a reasonable and peaceful manner. At the conference, the European nations, all except Switzerland attended, divided up the African continent by claim and by the rule of occupation. It was not enough, for example, for England to claim Nigeria. England also had to prove that it had treaty agreements, buildings, soldiers, and administrators on the ground to support their claim. So basically, in this meeting, they are dividing up the continent of Africa to be controlled by these tiny countries in Europe. 
And in order to claim land in Africa, you had to have something there to say that you were there and controlling it. Okay? All right, and continuing on. At Berlin, the European nations also agreed to certain principles regarding colonization. These included free trade, the elimination of slavery, respect for each other's territorial claims, and improving the moral and material well-being of Africans. They did not, however, consider the land claims of Africans. We're going to pause real quick and underline this sentence. Okay? So agreed to certain principles. So they have free trade, the elimination of slavery, pardon me for that line, respect for each other's territorial claims, and improving the moral and material well-being of Africans. That's going to be the big one. In fact, I'm going to erase the other stuff we underline. Okay? Europe was going to take one of its causes for colonizing Africa to be moral and material well-being of Africans. Basically, they're saying the Africans need help improving themselves. Okay? That's one of the reasons. I'm going to go ahead and erase that. We're going to scroll back up because I forgot to underline one or two things up here. Okay, so firstly, this right here. Africa was filled with incredible natural resources. That is definitely one of these reasons why Europe is going into Africa. Okay, that's another big one. Basically, they want to get these resources and make money off of them. All right, let's go ahead and continue on. All the way back down here, right here. This short background brings us to the question asked by this mini cube. Don't worry about that. Basically, the question that we're going to be studying all week. For more than three centuries, Europeans had avoided the African inter interior, okay, the in inner part of Africa. Why? They avoided it for 300 years. Now, powers like England, France, and Germany showed a fresh interest in getting and holding large pieces of the African continent. But why this new interest? More specifically, in the late 19th century, the late 1800s, what was the driving force behind European imperialism in Africa? Why at this time do they suddenly want to take control of most of Africa? Okay, guys, that's the background essay. Let's go ahead and read through the questions together. Once again, you'll be answering these in the student notes section for the week. So you'll go ahead and click over here, go out of this assignment, scroll down to right here where it says April 13 through 17, assessment student note sheet click on that open up the notes and you'll go ahead and answer the questions in here that way you guys can actually turn it in to me at the end of the week okay and i do want to clarify turn this in at the end of the week but you can go ahead and answer the questions today so let's go ahead and read through these questions i'll make this a little bigger so it's easier for us to read all right number one between 1500 and 1800 what was the main reason europeans did not enter the interior of africa okay what stopped them from going inside africa Number two, what is the difference between ending the slave trade and ending slavery? Okay, there's a difference between ending the trade of slaves and ending slavery itself. So go ahead and be talking about that. What is the connection between a man like Mungo Park and imperialism? Okay, what does he have to do with imperialism? Excuse me. What percentage of Africa had been colonized by 1870? What percentage of it? Okay, it's listed in the reading. What likely explains the poor standing of Leopold II among historians today? Why do we kind of view him as a bad guy? Okay. Number six. Why, or excuse me, when was the Berlin Conference and what did it do? When was it held and what was its purpose? Such, what did it achieve? Number seven. What place were Africans given at the conference table in Berlin? Did they have a place? That's a hint. And then lastly, number eight. Define the following terms. Okay, malaria, imperialism, transatlantic slave trade, forced labor, rule of occupation, and free trade. You guys, will, those are all bolded in the document. You will have to use the context to define those words. Okay? And lastly, you guys have a closing question for the day. Was the colonization of Africa justified? Basically, was it right that the Europeans did this or was it wrong? that they did this, took control of most of Africa. Okay, that is the read aloud for today. I hope that was helpful and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thanks for listening and I'll see you guys tomorrow.